Hi folks, today I thought we'd talk a little bit about form drills. And here's the dark, dirty little secret. I, I do some form drills now and then, but in general, I don't regularly do form drills. I've just never felt that there was the particular need to do those, despite the fact that I think you'd be hard pressed to find an elite runner that doesn't do form drills. You'd think, well, if they need to do them, I must need to do them too, but I, I haven't done those. So first let's do a little differentiation. I always do dynamic warmups. I'll do a dynamic warm-up before any run and before speed work, I'll do even more dynamic workups or warm-ups. That's not necessarily the same as form drills. Now, some of the warm-ups that I do are in fact form drills. For example, I'll usually do butt kickers or skips during a dynamic warm-up. Those are also form drills. I'm doing those though to get my body warmed up. I'm not necessarily thinking about form and running technique. Conversely, there's a lot of dynamic warm-ups, you know, leg swings, um, Spider-Man scoops and things like that that are dynamic in nature, but they, they're nothing to do with a form drill. So just remember that really any form drill is probably also dynamic, but not everything dynamic. So I don't want you to talk about I haven't done dynamic. I have, it's some specific form. Anyway, why have I changed my mind? Because I'm now of the belief that I do in fact need to be doing form drills on a regular basis. And chances are that you should be doing those too. We're talking about, you know, butt kickers, high knees, skips. There are probably two dozen different form drills that you can find out though, but those are some really common ones to think about adding to your repertoire. So what changed my mind? I was listening to a podcast on strength running about developing speed. They were interviewing a high school coach by the name of Ryan Banta. Now, of course, first of all, when I heard, well, high school coach, I'm not really interested in what a high school coach is doing because I'm, as I'm recording, I'm 63. I'm not a high school kid. But he recognizes that, and the interviewer recognizes that, and they do talk about some speed development with what he does, but how that applies to adults, especially since the, the body is different than high school, and generally running longer distances. And this guy has some amazing credentials in his coaching history, which I think is 19 years. He's had 135 all-state appearances, 10 state championships, five runners up. I mean, the guy clearly knows how to develop speed in his athletes because he's got some great success. So that kind of makes my ears perk up. The other thing that really caught my attention, he did talk a lot about drills and technique and do that. And part of it is, like, yeah, 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 yeah. But then he made the comment that he spends more time with his kids coaching them during the drills than he does the actual running on the track. That's how important he thinks it is that they really get that nailed down and get that good technique. So, you know, why does that matter? Why does running form matter? It's a little bit intuitive, but here's an example anyway. If you got a car, would you rather get 25 miles to the gallon or would you really rather get 28 miles to the gallon? And obviously, I'm just kind of pulling those numbers out of the air, but basically, you'd certainly want the car that's more efficient. It works the same way with your body. I'm going to hold up an image from the Chicago Marathon. On the top are the elite runners at about the mile 13 mark. And at the bottom are the, the everyday runners at about that same mark, 13 miles. Those average runners are on pace at that point in time to probably run about a four hour marathon. Someday, maybe I'll get software where I can insert the digital image and you can see this better. Don't have that today, so it's just a picture. But you can see, when you look at the elites, how good their form looks compared to the people down below. If you look up to the elites, you can see that their knees are coming up. Look at the extension behind. If you look at that second guy from the, the front way in the back, you can see he's reaching behind. Uh, the one in the very front over to my right, your left, whatever. You can see his, his foot is coming up. They've got really good technique compared to the people below look more like they're just kind of shuffling along. And that makes them run more efficiently. They're the 28 mile per gallon car versus the 25 mile per gallon car. So improving your running technique is going to help you not only run faster, but run longer because you're going to be more efficient. So what should you be doing? Well, uh, you should spend probably five to 10 minutes prior to running doing form drills and you really want to be focused on technique. Now that's challenging. You don't have Ryan Banta or somebody else there to watch you to make sure you're doing it properly. There are tons of really good videos all over YouTube that will give you a good idea how you're doing it. If you can have somebody watch, that's great. But the purpose is not to do the, the drill per se, it's do the drill really well. So really try and focus on making sure that your technique is going well with that. Now, you might have a situation where you say, well, I can't. You know, I my body isn't doing it the way they're supposed to. Then that means that you have some type of imbalance. You have something that is tight. You have one side tighter than the other side. You have a muscular imbalance. You have something that's preventing you from doing that. And what you need to figure out is, well, what is that thing that's keeping me from getting my knee up, for example? 
and then work on the strength or flexibility or whatever it is to correct that because you want to be able to do the drill well. On the other hand, if you can do the drill well, that's saying my body's capable of doing this. How do I make it easier for my body to do this so you get some repetition? And then, of course, the next question comes up. So which drill should I do? Well, here's the good news. I'm going to tell you, I don't know which drills you should do because there are dozens of drills out there. And what you want to do is pick what's an area of my technique that I think I need to be working on and try and focus on some drills that are going to help with that. Not that there's anything wrong with doing other drills as well. I think they're all going to be helpful. But, you know, for me, for example, I want to focus on my backside mechanics. What are backside mechanics? That is everything that is happening behind me because that is a weakness for me in my running form. So I'm specifically looking for drills that are going to help me improve and do better with my backside mechanics, which should make me the car that gets a little bit better mileage, which should help me run a little bit faster or a little bit longer or less injury or maybe all of the above. So kind of in summary, uh, you should do drills. If you're not, you should be doing them before every run. You got to be consistent. You got to do them all the time. And then you will eventually run better. Drills aren't the type of thing where you're going to do those and all of a sudden that run you're just all of a sudden better and more efficient it might make a little bit of a difference but really working on your form drills is a long-term play for better running